Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at a CPA exam simulation that deals with evidence. Evidence is a major and an important topic on the CPA exam auditing and attestation section. You want to make sure you are comfortable with all sorts of evidence before sitting on the exam because you could be given those questions in a multiple choice to select the appropriate type of evidence or you could be given this information in a form of a simulation. So you want to make sure it's something you want to be very comfortable with. Evidence, assertions, internal control, the cycles, IT, those are major components of the auditing and attestation exam. Now, if you are a CPA candidate or an accounting student, but especially if you are a CPA candidate, I strongly suggest you check out my website, farhatlectures.com. Now, I understand you might be using Becker, Roger, Glime, Wiley, or some other CPA course. That's great. You do need that course. What I can do is I can be a useful addition to that CPA course. I can add 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam by explaining the material a little bit more in depth and slower than your typical CPA review course. And here's my offer to you. Are you willing to take your chance? Are you willing to try my system for $30 to find out you might be able to pass your CPA exam? I might be able to cross that, help you cross that 75 percent. That's the offer. Your risk is $30 limited. Your gain is unlimited passing the exam. Are you willing to take that chance? If you like my system, you keep it and it's $29.99 a month. If not, you can cancel and that's your risk. That's the only thing you are risking. If not for anything, check out my website to find out how well is your university perform on the CPA exam. Simply put on average, what is the score at your university? I have it the overall score as well the score per section. I also have resources for other accounting, finance, tax, and other courses. Please connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so and check out my LinkedIn recommendation. My recommendations are people who used my system and did very well on the CPA exam. Please like this recording, share it. If it's helping you, it's gonna help other people as well. Connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. So let's take a look at this problem in which we are giving scenarios and you are being asked to select the type of the audit that we are discussing here. For each of the following audit procedure, indicate the type of the audit procedure it represents. So again, we have many type of audit procedures and many type of evidence. So you want to know what are we doing here? You want to understand the different type of evidence. This is extremely, you know, I said this before at the beginning, but I cannot emphasize this enough. So in this session, I'm going to go over these very briefly, but if you want a detailed explanation, please go to Farhat Lectures where I have several recording about evidence. What is evidence? How do we collect evidence? The, the different type of evidence? What evidence serve which assertion? So on and so forth. Looking at A, sending written requests to the entity's customer requesting that they report the amount to the, uh, the amount owed to the entity. Okay, what type of evidence is that? When we send a confirmation to someone else, to a third party. Well, I, I hope you know this, and if not, don't sit for the exam yet. That's a confirmation. So that's the evidence is a confirmation. Generally speaking, this is a strong form of evidence. What, as long as it's controlled, controlled means you send it out and you received it. I still remember when I, when I was in practice, I would mail those requests myself. I would mail them out. For example, I'll put the client name, the account number, and tell them how much does this uh, report the amount owed to the entity. And I will put also a returned envelope and with my name on it. So when the, when, when the client gets that confirmation, they will send it back to me. I would receive it. I would receive it myself. So as long as it's controlled, this is a strong type of evidence because it's a third party evidence. Okay. For example, you could also you can you can confirm account receivable. You can confirm with the legal counsel of the client. You can confirm bank balances. There's many form of confirmation, but that's a strong, strong form of evidence. B, examining large sales invoices for a period of two days before and after year end to determine if sales are recorded in the prior period. Here you are, you are looking at, you are examining, you are looking at something. What do you think when you examine something? You're examining large, you're looking, you're basically examining. That's what we're saying. You're looking at them. I would say this is a form of inspection inspection of record or document. That's what you are doing. You are inspecting the record and the document. But here you have to be very careful when you are inspecting the records and the document. You want to make sure that those documents and record are authentic because these are provided by the client. You just want to make sure they are authentic. That's the first thing. If they are not authentic, it doesn't matter how hard you're going to examine them. Then 
you are looking at them for a period of two days or more this is basically a form of you know inspection this is what you are doing and you do inspect a lot of documents sometimes that that inspection could be done on a computer you're looking at the computer uh, rather than a physical physical invoice but the point is when you examine something it's a form of inspection inspection c agreeing the total of the account receivable subledger to the account receivable general ledger account so here what you are doing is you are adding up all the subledgers all the subledgers and for example you, you you add up all the clients account uh, all their customers they have five customers you add them up it's a million dollar then you look at their general ledger and make sure it's a million dollar that's what you this is what you are doing now first of all are you doing any form of inspection yes you are when you are looking at the record you're inspecting the record is this the only thing that you are doing and the answer is not you are also agreeing you are you want to make sure you add them up and you are agreeing them so you are performing some form of computation reperformance so it's not only that you are inspecting the record you are also reperforming and sometimes like i just the truth is in the real world if you are using quickbooks or some sort of a software and what i used to work we had a lot of quickbooks quickbooks will obviously match all the sub ledgers to the general ledgers otherwise you know the, the system is it, that type of process is done automatically nevertheless you still want to do it just to make sure everything is good everything makes sense so you're inspecting it make sure it's there and you are agreeing you are reperforming that step but again in the real world this step is done automatically or computerized d discussing the adequacy of the allowance for doubtful account with the credit managers just look at the at what we are seeing here we are discussing what does it mean discussing it means you are talking you are asking the managers about the doubtful account you know could you tell me a little bit more why is it uh, a little bit more than last year why is it less than last year why is it five hundred thousand dollars why is it three hundred thousand dollars just that's all what you are doing you are discussing and asking them questions about the economic uh, uh, the economic situation overall in the industry that's all what you are doing to determine the allowance what type of evidence is that that's basically inquiries you are inquiring you are inquiring with the customer inquiry well first inquiry it depends on the management integrity because you are listening to the manager how much do you trust that manager or, or management overall if you do trust the manager then it's you have a strong evidence you know it's a strong but it doesn't have you, you always have to back it up because obviously the manager is biased they're going to tell you what you want to hear so you always need to corroborate this evidence okay it, it, although it's a, it might be strong but not, it's not going to persuade you you need more evidence to back up what they are saying but the form of evidence is inquiry and you want to make sure you understand the difference between all these comparing the current year gross profit percentage with the gross profit percentage of the last four year okay hopefully you know what this is you are looking at ratios from year to year we call this analytical procedures and on my website if you don't know what analytical procedure is i go into details about analytical procedures we do analytical procedures at the beginning of the audit when we are uh, when we are uh, learning about the client initially we do it through the audit and we can do it at the end of the audit so analytical procedure is an important step that you have to be familiar with and by the way inquiries usually inquiries it's done when you are learning about the customer learning about their internal control learning about their business it doesn't mean it's not done in, during the the collection of the evidence but it's more done during the initial stage f examining examining a new plastic extrusion machine to ensure that this major acquisition was received now you're examining something right you're examining you're going to, oh uh, examining it means i am doing some inspection yes you are but look what you are inspecting you're inspecting the existence of a new machine so this is inspection of a tangible asset tangible means it's a physical asset that you have it's a tangible asset so that's a form of inspection and that's very important for the existence okay it does exist it is there okay so it's important but it's only you know to, to verify existence now you could also look at other things look at the sales receipt you see how much they pay for it so on and so forth but the inspection itself will make sure it's there now you want to make sure you match the you know for example if the if the machine has a specific vin number uh, not vin number an account number you want to make sure that you see that account number it should be the same thing at the purchase invoice it should be so we need to make sure that what you are seeing in your hand the paper in your hand matches what you are looking at physically okay 
G, watching the entity's warehouse personnel count the raw material inventory. All what you are doing is standing there and watching. Now, you are better off if they don't see you. I did this several times. I did this several times in the real world. So when you are watching, what are you doing? Okay, are you inspecting? No, not really. You're not inspecting anything. Are you observing? Yes, that's exactly what watching is. You're doing observation. Again, observation is good if they don't see you, if they don't know you are there, because people will act differently when they see you. And usually also observation is done when you are learning about the client, about the client process and procedures. So it's a good, it's a good type of evidence if they don't see you, they don't see what's going on. It means the people who are being watched, they don't see you, you are watching them because they would act differently, especially if they know that you are the auditor, obviously. You don't want them to know that. H, performing, performing test count of the warehouse personnel count of raw material. Now you are doing actual, actual counting. You are performing test count. So obviously the, uh, maybe this, this, was, this was done by the client themselves. Now you are performing a test count again. What does that mean? It means you are doing a re performance you are recounting you are doing the work again basically basically you are checking on their work that's all what you are doing when you reperform you check on their work you check on their work i obtaining a letter from the entity's attorney okay the entity's attorney is a third party indicating there are no lawsuit in progress against the entity when you obtain something from a third party it's like it's like obtaining uh, uh, the, the balance from the bank, from a third party. This is a confirmation. You need to know, there's a lot to know about confirmation. So if you're not familiar with positive confirmation, negative confirmation, you really want to make sure you understand confirmation inside out. So this is a form of confirmation, okay? And it's, again, it's a strong evidence as long as the process is controlled and as long as that third party respond to you and as long as that third party pay attention to what you are asking them. So there's more than just, it's good evidence there's other qualification for that but generally speaking it's a good evidence because it's not coming from the client that's why we consider it a strong evidence again more about confirmation and evidence you could learn on my website forehead lectures tracing the prices used by the entities billing program for pricing sales invoices to the entities approved list here what you are doing is once you are tracing you are looking at things you are inspecting and you are reperforming now again this the computer system might be doing this but you also want to double check you just want to double check okay so you want to double check so you want to uh, tracing the prices used by the entity billing program to for so notice pricing sales invoices to the entity's approval list make sure they they confirm you are double checking you are reperforming this step reviewing again reviewing what does just also reviewing real quick the general ledger for unusual adjustment and entries now you might be saying reviewing is a form of inspection you're not really you know you're not inspecting you're just basically reviewing and what are you re reviewing for for unusual transactions so let me give you an example of reviewing the general ledger for unusual adjusting entries let's assume at the end of the year you had a large sale or a large expense so you're looking for something that's unusual you're not looking for anything in particular. You're looking for something that should not be there. Or if it should be there, it does not make any sense. You want more explanation for this. We call this step scanning. You're just looking for unusual, just like looking over. Basically, sc scanning is looking over the transaction, making sure everything makes sense for unusual entries. For example, if you see that they are reducing their expenses, you want to know, this is unusual. Why, why are your expenses being reduced? Or there's a large revenue transaction this is look this looks out of whack why is this large transaction in there or anything that does not make any sense basically you are reviewing real quick the general ledger it's a form of scanning okay uh, inspection it's like more like you are really look looking at it in detail okay uh, reviewing is basically scanning scanning is just overview oh let's look let, let's look at it overview so when you say you know what's the difference between inspection and scanning scanning is going a little bit faster okay that's 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 the difference between the two so basically at the end of this recording i'm going to ask you again to like it share it check out my website and again i don't replace your cpa course you can keep it if it's working for you that's great if you need that extra supplement that vitamin to help you understand the material bet better whether it's for becker roger glime or yv I will be there to help you with that step.
step. And that step alone, this this is mostly what pe what students are missing, that extra knowledge. Because the CPA exam really tests you about basic knowledge. But you have to know that basic knowledge very strongly. So you have to be have strong knowledge in that basic knowledge. If you are weak in your basic knowledge, any question will trip you. You will fall, you, you, you will not you will misunderstand it or you you will you will misinterpret it. But if you have a strong knowledge about the topic, you could eliminate, as I show you in my multiple choice sections, immediately, most of the time, you could eliminate two choices by having a basic knowledge, only basic knowledge about the topic, and a little bit of tweak, and you'll be able to get to the right answer. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.